We are here in Arezzo, Italy, at the Church of San Francesco. And the main chapel of the Church of San Francesco, the Cappella Maggiore, the main chapel of this church, is the Chapel of the Legend of the True Cross, which is decorated with scenes depicting the Legend of the True Cross by Piero della Francesca. Now, Arezzo is a town in Tuscany, Italy. It's not too far from San Sepulcro, which is the town where Piero della Francesca is from and that still uh, is home to a lot of his works. And this virtual environment of uh, the Chapel of the True Cross is running on a Quest 2 virtual reality headset which means it's wireless, uh, but also that it's fully three-dimensional and we can move around the space and get up close, uh, not only to uh, these Trump loyal um, marble panels, these fake painted marble panels that line the, the sort of ground floor of the, the main chapel here, but we can also sort of fly up virtually and look at these narrative sequences, this fresco narrative in much greater detail. And because this is a rather confusing uh, fresco cycle, the scenes refer to each other and they jump around chronologically. Uh, I've included this little pamphlet that we can pick up. Hopefully. There we go. And this little plane with this diagram on it of the, uh, the chapel that we're standing in. So we can see if we're standing right here, we see the, the, this large window. Uh, the narrative cycle starts in the, the far upper um, sort of vault panel here, and then it proceeds down immediately below it over to this scene, the burial of the True Cross, and then it jumps down here to this Annunciation scene, over to the Dream of Constantine. Constantine uh, at the Battle of the Milvian Bridge, defeating Maxentius, so that's six, and then it jumps back up there to the interrogation to sort of find where the true cross is and then it wraps around this way to the discovery and the testing of the true cross so even though number seven right there uh, it sort of jumps over to the far end the discovery of the true cross after they've interrogated uh, the person who knows where it is and then the testing of the true cross so if you were to visit Arezzo today in person this is the experience you would get. You would be able to stand down here, and above us stretches this beautiful uh, fresco cycle by Piero della Francesca, but it's very hard to see what's going on up there in the upper reaches. It's probably confusing to understand how these um, scenes jump around, and the whole time, actually, as I'm doing right now, you have to stand with your head craned back uh, looking up at these scenes. So we can move over and stand against this wall and we can look up and, and get a sense. But wouldn't it be great if we could sort of, if we had a ladder and we could go up there and, and look at these scenes in detail? And that was exactly my uh, goal with this virtual environment that I used in my uh, Italian Renaissance art class that I taught last fall, uh, where all the students. 20 of them had these VR headsets, and we were able to visit together virtually the uh, Chapel of the True Cross and other scenes that I had made. So let's sort of take advantage of virtual reality, virtual environment, and we'll go up and start uh, exploring the fresco cycle by actually going all the way up and standing face to face with it. So we can use this teleport mechanic go there and now we're standing up at the top level of the chapel 
And I've put not only these uh, little signs, these virtual signs that tell you which scene you're standing in front of, because it's a lot to remember. There's a number of scenes, and some of them actually have two different scenes per panel. But I've also put these sort of virtual scaffolding in here, uh, these gray platforms that we're standing on, because if these were not here, you would very much get a sense of vertigo. Uh, the great thing about virtual reality headsets is that you get this incredible sense of presence as if you're actually there. So it really feels like I'm standing 40 feet above the floor and looking down below, which is not necessarily a pleasant feeling, uh, so it's nice to, to feel like we're standing on solid ground here. The other great thing about this virtual scaffolding is that from below, as you may have noticed before, from below the scaffolding is invisible, so it doesn't obscure our view. And if we want to go back up, we can of course just go here to this one with the arrow uh, indicating that it will take us up in the air, so we'll do that. And now we'll go back down again and look uh, at some of these in some detail. So here's uh, the, the burial of the True Cross. This is where uh, King Solomon has ordered that the True Cross be buried and these sort of workmen who look kind of disheveled uh, with their clothes hanging off, they're working in the heat of summer, uh, so they're getting hot and sweaty and they're sort of looking slovenly. Even so, there this the pose of this fellow mirrors uh, the the very recognizable pose of Jesus carrying the cross. This is the wood of the true cross before uh, it has been used to to make the cross upon which Jesus will be crucified, and that's hinted at by the the wood grain is forming a halo around the head of this figure, uh, despite his sort of disheveled appearance. And here we can see a bit of Piero della Francesca's uh, fascination with perspective in this horse. So this horse's butt uh, that we can look at, and there's another laughing horse over there, perhaps laughing at this joke. Uh, and we can see these um, sort of equestrians standing here with squires, perhaps tending to these horses while the Queen of Sheba uh, realizes that this bridge is made out of the true cross. So again, um, Piero del Francesca loves geometry. He loves doing interesting things with perspective, and we can see that in the dagger on this guy's hip, uh, the hats, all of these interesting uh, hats that figures are wearing, especially here. Uh, again, showing off his perspective. Some of these figures seem to be wearing uh, hats for the sole purpose of demonstrating uh, Piero's mastery of geometry and, and representing geometry in, in two dimensions. So this is one of my favorite scenes right here, the dream of Constantine. So this is the Roman Emperor Constantine uh, asleep in his tent in his military camp the night before the Battle of the Milvian Bridge when he will become the sole emperor of the, the Roman Empire. He defeats his rival, Maxentius, uh, in battle the next day, and he takes Rome. And we can see, uh, again, another sort of uh, example of Piero del Francesca playing with uh, narrative continuation and narrative referentiality. So this dream with the angel holding the, the cross saying, in this sign you will conquer. Uh, and then the next day, Constantine riding at the head of his troops, carrying the, the Christian cross. So he's converted to Christianity, and we see this guard outside of his tent, who then, sort of turning the corner, is now uh, riding alongside Constantine in battle. And they are uh, crossing the Milvian Bridge just outside of Rome, putting the army of Maxentius, the pagan emperor of Rome, Constantine's rival emperor, putting him to flight, 
Maxen just actually dies in this battle. He drowns in the Tiber River, which is this river that they are crossing, and wherein we see uh, Piero della Francesca putting reflections of houses and trees in the sky. And this battle scene sort of refers directly across, so not chronologically uh, sequential, but thematically sequential, you could say, because we have this battle scene here, Christianity triumphing over paganism. Uh, likewise, on this side, Heraclius uh, defeating Kashrau, the, the Persian uh, emperor who had taken the true cross. So here, Heraclius representing uh, sort of Christianity, defeating the Persian, the Sassanid uh, emperor for the return of the cross. And again, more examples of Piero's fa fascination with geometry and perspective and showing horses in interesting ways and shields in foreshortened ways. Well, hopefully that was enjoyable. It's sort of a little explainer video of this virtual reality application. Uh, I'll make, I think, a 360 degree video showing off the chapel as well, because it's really quite beautiful. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed it. Yeah.